Have you ever had a taste of the optimal human experience? You know, that feeling when nothing really matters. You feel extra confident. You feel like you could take on the world and you feel like you were immersed. You are at one with the task that you are completing, whether it be a sport, a game, or just writing at your computer. Some people call this state the flow state, and that is a state of consciousness where nothing else matters except for what is right in front of you, what your attention is immersed in. You lose the sense of self-consciousness and self-centeredness that leads to anxiety or boredom or just suffering in general, as many of the spiritual teachers and ancient masters would say. So when you tap into this state, you cease to care what other people think, become one with the task you are engaged in, and know exactly what to do next, how well you are doing, and gain a deep sense of satisfaction from it. So as we'll talk about later, pertaining to self-consciousness and self-centeredness leading to anxiety and boredom, the way that you end this kind of suffering is by learning to control your attention, which is heavily influenced by the ego or the self. So when you become self-conscious through attention, you notice something and you become self-conscious because you're comparing it to something, you tend to highlight the differences between yourself and the thing that you are comparing it to. And so this split in attention causes you to use precious mental energy, which could be focused directly on the task at hand or whatever you are trying to accomplish. Like when you see a pimple on your skin in the mirror and then an idea, you don't even have to be in direct contact with someone who has clear skin to have an idea of what clear skin is and the perception of clear skin and then the desire popping up to want clear skin, but you not being able to have it because of the pimple on your face. So you start to compare ideas of what should be rather than accepting things as they are and refocusing your attention. So the question is how do we gain control of our attention? And the answer is by treating life like the game it is. So my generation and other generations, but mostly my generation from what I've noticed, is notorious for transferring obsession from video games to real life or just business success. Because games, business, or just constructions of the external world, in other words, the matrix, they present a desirable hierarchy of goals. They have a structure that frames your attention. They introduce a challenge to narrow your attention further. And they require a player to have the skill that meets the requirements to play the game. So what few people understand is that you can create a game out of any situation in life, as long as you can mold your mind to create the certain aspects that a game entails. And if that game is fun to you, then life becomes more enjoyable because you start playing rather than being played. And so the importance behind this is that we're in a world where it's create or be created. So if you can't mold your mind to create your own reality or create your own game that you play and you have fun playing in life, then your mind will be molded and it already has been molded to play external status games that society has created for you. And these are things like going to college, getting a job, or just taking another structured approach to life that someone else has laid out for you but that may not be the best fit for you. And it just leads to unnecessary suffering and pain and just not enjoying your life because you're living, you're following the steps that someone else has presented to you. And that may not align with the goals that you personally have in this lifetime, because that's just the thing. Sovereign living or autonomous living or just being independent and building your own thing, your own way of survival is difficult. It's uncertain. Right. And the mind craves order. It craves certainty. So if there is a path that is easier or more certain or more secure for someone to take, that's where the masses flock. That's where 99 percent of people flock. And so the purpose of this video is for awareness. I know a lot of you have similar values and goals as mine, and that is to build your own thing, be independent and break free of the matrix if you want to frame it that way, but to just live an enjoyable life on your own terms. So let's dive in by talking about the macro game of life. So when you're playing an open world strategy game like World of Warcraft, there's a few patterns that we can recognize. The main ones being stacking gold, 
choosing a profession, leveling up your character, and the progression that goes along with those things. But those are just the common ones. That's Everyone kind of knows that. You've heard the metaphor of life being a video game before. So let's take it a bit deeper and let's really paint a picture here of what's going on. The system is rigged. You can't change it, but you can learn it. That is how you rig yourself in the system's favor. So the conventional path to success has already been programmed into the collective psyche. Before we know it, due to the curse of knowledge, humans wanting to know more and learn more and learning being the foundation of the human experience, that what we that's what we do as we age, as we just learn new things over and over again, and we don't question those things. So before we even know it, we're already in pursuit of winning the game that other people have laid out for us. And that is usually in favor of maintaining the game itself, right? Being trained into the game to keep it going. And 90% of the time, it just doesn't work out that way. You think that the, the secure path is secure, but 90% of people or however many percent of people just end up with way too much anxiety, way too much stress, way too much overwhelm, and, and they get trapped in this jail or prison of their own doing. And so why is this or this video important? Because times are changing. They're clearly changing. More people are going remote. More people are choosing to do their own thing. The, the flaws in the system itself are revealing itself. And the programmers can't patch the game fast enough. Who are the programmers? I have no idea. But the just school curriculums in general can't keep up with the creator economy who are giving out, they're educating people on how to do their own thing and not get trained into the conventional employment system that the school is directly tied with and other things like banking like whatever your beliefs are about bitcoin or crypto or decentralized currency there's a problem in the system and somebody saw that and so now they are individuals and small teams are building solutions to create a better banking system for people or just a better financial monetary system. And then the same thing with like huge agencies where freelancers who have a great skill set and understand digital tools and skills, they're coming in as freelancers or contract workers and big companies and just random people in general are hiring them to do those jobs rather than just hiring them as an employee. So there's those, the people that are actively trying to solve the problem of this faulty system. And then there are those that in a video game would be classified as an NPC or a non-player character. They're the people that just do what they're told. They go along with the system. They never question it. And they kind of just are there right so in a video game it's the townsfolk it's even like the the environment people so the bosses in a battle and just others that keep the game interesting for players it allows it allows the game to maintain its structure and keep on going and then the people that question the system and understand it from a big picture can actually play the game and navigate the game and have their own success within that game so that was one thing where the game is already there the game is already out there and programmed onto the collective psyche or the hard drive, right? But the next thing is that there are infinite paths that you can take in an open world strategy game like World of Warcraft. So here's a graphic, and I thought it was pretty clever creating this, where on the left you have birth, on the right you have death, in the middle line you have now, and so you can see the path that you've taken up until now, and that is your experience, and then the slightly darker circles that have all the different paths on the right, those are the paths that you can take to hit that green little dot that I've labeled as success or winning the external game, winning the game of the external world. Because in World of Warcraft, you have a series of choices that you get to make. What your character looks like, what kind of player they are, like a warrior, mage, rogue, etc what profession they want to specialize in, the quest path that they want to take to level up, whether they play solo or with a group, what guild they join to help them level up faster, and a series of other personal choices that allow them to play the game in an interesting way, right? It's like people choosing what sport they play when they are growing up, or uh, people that are trying to start a business, what skill they learn or what business model they choose. They're all viable, but they take a different skill set and they lead people down a different path. That's like I always say with the one person business model is that your brand is your goal in life, right? So if my goal is just the good life or financial freedom or something big and broad like that, my unique path is what makes my brand unique, right? How I'm going to achieve that goal is going to be vastly different, vastly unique. My story 
is going to be my brand. It's going to be what separates me from everyone else. And it allows me to create my own personal monopoly or mental monopoly, as we'll talk about in the next video. So it's like if five people were standing at the bottom of a mountain and life being infinite mountains. So five people standing at the bottom and they reach the first peak. Well, first they look up and they all draw different paths on how they're going to reach that first peak. And then there's just infinite mountains to climb. But once you reach that peak, you can look down and you can help people navigate that path up in a better way, right? That's what business is, is helping people solve their problems or climb the mountain in a faster way to achieve their desired outcome, which is reaching that peak that you've reached. So the next thing that was there, you can take infinite paths to achieve success. But the next one is that leveling up increases the complexity of the self. So in the real world, the, the main spiritual problem is that people never change. They identify with their beliefs, their jobs, or just another finite aspect of the external constructed world. And then once they've reached that point of just like static, not wanting to change, they don't learn anymore. They don't stack more skills. They don't level up to the point of more opportunities being available to them. So by improving your skill set, by learning and executing and taking on challenges, it allows you to take on higher level challenges. And by taking on higher level challenges, you give you open up room to take on a lot more or have a lot more opportunities because that knowledge and experience expands your awareness of what is actually possible. So in a video game, it's you level up to a point. Eventually, let's say you reach the max level. You can navigate the world freely, stress free. You can do whatever you want. You can fly across the map. You can teleport. You can do all this crazy stuff. Now, this is all metaphorical pertaining to the real world, but just by consistently learning and increasing your skill level and taking on challenges in like going up the ladder of challenges, then you're able to take on, you're able to do so much more in this world and pick your battles from then on. So as you develop yourself, you gain more ability to create order from chaos. You have the power to create a game out of more situations in life. And so that overall structure that we just talked about, all of those things, talking about it in terms of like World of Warcraft or an open world strategy game that represents the macro game of life but it goes a bit deeper and we can talk about the micro games of life on like a situation to situation basis so the first thing we need to do is set a hierarchy of goals so games present the big goal of winning but then they also have clarity on how to reach that goal with sub goals like quests because if there was only the one goal of winning and you had no idea how to get there then the game wouldn't be fun because as humans we have the ability to aim with our minds into the future like monkeys they can they can throw their poop but it's usually hurled just like straight at the ground they usually don't hit something that is straight in front of them but humans on the other hand with skill and practice and time someone can throw a football 50 yards out and hit a bullseye on a target now, the same is very similar with the mind in creating a vision for your future and then slowly leveling up until you are able to create that vision. So we don't want to be poop hurled at the ground like how monkeys do. We want to have a vision that we can build towards. But if we don't want to get overwhelmed by this grand vision for our future, then we have to create sub goals in order to get there. So I would recommend that you sit down with a pen and paper or you can use my power planner which is free, link in the description, to create the first iteration of your vision. Understand it's an iteration. It doesn't have to be perfect. Then create a 10-year, one-year, and monthly goals. Again, these don't have to be perfect. Just get the first iteration out and you can come back to it. Have a place for weekly direction and reflection, and then align your daily priority tasks with those. And now with these written down, this is important, and most people don't understand why because they've never done it, but it's important because writing these things down, it's like an anchor. We talked about two videos ago, how I remember everything I learned, that you should learn and build in unison. You need something to build so that you have something to apply your learnings to, and then your awareness starts to register more opportunities for what you are building, right? Because humans, compared to animals that survive on a physical level, we survive on a conceptual level, right? We try to survive our beliefs and other things that we've identified and attached with. So it only makes sense that we would try to survive a project or we would try to survive our vision for the future. And because of that, since that is at the top of our mind, 
we're going to notice things that we can apply to that vision and then clarify it further and continue striving towards it. So that was setting a hierarchy of goals, but next we need to understand the frame of the game. So your perspective or your worldview is the frame in which you view reality. It's like a camera. So the field of view, even if the background is blurred, constrains what registers in the frame itself. So by molding your perspective in any situation, you allow yourself to perceive what used to be a huge problem as a minor road bump. Because if I'm so dead set on the hierarchy of goals that I've created, my vision for my future and the goals related to that, and my attention is narrowed in on that, then it's going to be difficult for uh, a distraction to register in the camera itself, right? Or in the perspective itself. So in a video game, there are two things that help create order or order consciousness or create this frame of the game, something that you need to focus on and narrow in your attention on. So the first thing is rules. Every single video game has a set of rules that you must follow. And when we play the game, this allows us to use our limited conscious attention or focus to remain focused on the here and now while keeping our vision or the end goal of winning in the back of our head. This is important because in psychology, when you are kind of projecting into the future or you have a, a desire, something that you do not have, that is when dopamine spurts into your brain. But when you are focused on the here and now, that's when the here and now chemicals like oxytocin, serotonin, and other neurochemicals like that, that's when those spurt into your brain. And so if you read the book, The Art of Impossibles by Stephen Kotler, it doesn't say this directly, but it, it mentions that flow, the flow state is kind of a neurochemical cocktail of all of these different neurotransmitters going to your brain. And this can be accomplished by exactly this. So in the real world, your rules are your values, right? That's on the macro scale. On the micro scale, you can create different rules. Like when you're going on a walk and you just you set rules to never step on a crack, right? Or to walk 2,500 steps or something like that. And so in terms of values, when you act in alignment with those values and you constrain your attention to the things that are in alignment with those, life becomes a bit more enjoyable. And so on the micro scale of everyday situations, clarity comes from eliminating environmental distractions, right? And that pretty much means creating a frame. So like when you're trying to do deep work and the common advice is to close your browser tabs, set a timer like Pomodoro, have clear steps for your work and use things like noise canceling headphones. And so like how I mentioned with creating rules for going on something like a walk, because I used to hate going on walks, even though, even though I knew how healthy it was for me to do so, you can create little rules for that to either turn what used to be mundane situations into enjoyable or to just gain perspective and start enjoying situations that you would normally hate. Because let's say you hate watching sports. I don't like watching sports, right? I just don't like football. I don't understand it. And that is the exact point. I don't understand the game. If I knew the game and was able to manipulate my attention to follow what's going on in the game, then I may be able to enjoy it. Or if uh, your spouse or your wife or your girlfriend, she likes going out and looking at antiques uh, just on like a Saturday afternoon and you don't want to do that and you're just dragging your feet the entire time and you're like, oh, I don't want to be here. I don't like doing this. But she creates a game out of it. She's like, oh, I like the price on this one. I like the look of this one. And she's in there having a very enjoyable time in some degree of a flow state. And you can do the same thing if you just zoom out, gain some perspective and create your own game out of it, whatever that may be. Even if it's as simple as like finding the stupidest rock you can find or finding the stupidest antique, right? And then you both have your own fun playing your own game. So that was rules. The second thing is mechanics. So if you haven't played a game before, it's it's not going to be that fun. Your aim is going to suck. You'll have to practice on low level challenges and you're going to look at top level players and you're going to be awestruck about how good they are at playing the game. So every game has a specific way for you to channel more of your senses, thoughts and prior experience to play it better. So in a video game, it's pressing a series of keys, buttons or mouse clicks. In board games, it's the effectiveness, creativity or forward thinking that goes into your strategy. In sports, it's the conditioning of your body and how you move it in accordance with the goal. And in all of the above, it's your perception of the situation or your frame of the game that allows you to choose in a way that 
moves you towards winning. And so another form of information is feedback. Feedback is important here to know how well you're doing in the game because all of this games, etc., it's ordering our consciousness. It's giving us structured information to pay attention to and our mind likes that. And so if you do something and you know that it was the wrong move or you made a mistake, then your perspective or your frame widens to the point of allowing distractions to penetrate that field. And then if you give attention to that distraction, then you're going to be off the game and you're not going to enjoy it as much. And so how do we improve our mechanics or just our skill relating to the game? And it's practice, of course. Right When you're playing a video game like World of Warcraft, people log in every single day to perform a repetitive series of tasks. They go and farm for gold, they create their armor, or they mine for ore, or they farm XP by going through dungeons over and over again. So you have to program the specific mechanic in your brain to the point of where you're getting results with less effort. In other words, habit formation. So if you can automate to an extent the decisions that you make on a daily basis that are conducive with your hierarchy of goals and achieving your end vision, then success kind of becomes inevitable. So we've talked about setting a hierarchy of goals and creating a frame for the game that you're playing. Now, this is arguably the most important part is the delicate balance between anxiety and boredom. So here's another graphic. This one is adapted from Mihai Csikszentmihalyi with his books, Flow and The Evolving Self. Highly, highly recommend you check those out. But you can see here that in the top quadrant, there's anxiety or self-consciousness. In the middle, there's flow or selflessness. And then at the bottom, there's boredom or self-centeredness. And on the right axis, there's skill level. And on the top, I mean, on the left axis, there is the challenge level. So the skill challenge match is extremely important here. So when you start playing a game, especially when you haven't read the rule book or you've never played before, is it going to be fun? No, of course not. And even if you knew the rules, it's still going to take time for you to grasp what's going on in the game. So this is why I always recommend just starting, right? Just start something. If you don't know how, you just start with what you know, and then you learn on the go and get real world experience. Do not get trapped in tutorial hell. I, this is one of my less popular videos, but it is the most important is how I remember everything I learned. Because if you were a level one in World of Warcraft and you were fighting a level 50, would it be fun? No, you'd lose immediately. But the thing here, as we know, is that you can create a better frame for that game, right? If you just have to, if you're a level one and you have to play against a level 50, how can you mold your perspective to create a better frame for that game? Like if you, instead of beating the level 50 as your goal, what if the goal was to see how fast you could lose against the level 50? Then it'd be kind of fun and you'd be interested in playing the game. And it's the same thing with something like chess, right? If, if you are just starting out playing chess and you're going against like your friend who's been playing for years or like you decide to enter a competition for some reason without having ample experience and years of practice under your belt, it's just not going to be a good time. So the lesson is if your skill is high and the challenge is low, you're going to get bored. And if your skill is low and the challenge is high, you're going to get anxious. And the boredom stems from self-centeredness. Your focus breaks from the task at hand and something else comes to mind that you'd rather be doing, another desire, right? So if you're bored at work, it's usually because you're not immersed in the task that your work presents and you're sitting there bored, thinking self-centeredly about the better things you could be doing with your time. And the anxiety comes from self-consciousness. So if the challenge is too high and your skill is too low, your attention is going to turn towards the concept of self. And again, you're going to allow distractions or problems to penetrate your awareness or your conscious field. And then your attention just starts going downhill from there. So as an example, it's like, if, if your skill is too low, you're gonna start thinking these thoughts where it's like, wow, I'm not as good as I thought or wow, I really need to work on my backswing. Or in a more practical situation, it's like that girl is way out of my league. Do you see how this is more self-conscious here where you are paying attention to your current skill level in relation to the skill that is required to play the game? So how do we prevent this? It's like the very start of the video, video where I mentioned that people don't change, they don't evolve, they aren't constantly learning and constantly building. It has to happen 
if you want an enjoyable life. You need something to immerse your attention in and continuously progress at that throughout life and develop yourself into a complex being that can take on bigger, broader, and bigger and broader challenges and just have more opportunity in the world that you can pick and choose and play games. At this point in our history, it should be possible for an individual to build a self that is not simply the outcome of biological drives and cultural habits, but a conscious personal creation. Mihai, Chicksep Mihai. So I remember the first time I downloaded World of Warcraft when I was a young kid, probably like 15 years old, and I spent a straight two hours just creating my character and playing around with how I wanted him to look while also considering the game itself. So I think about the minor details of what race I can be. We don't really have that choice, but metaphorically, paint a picture for yourself. Uh, what race I would be, what class I would have. Was I going to be a warrior, a mage, uh, a priest? Did I want to be a tank, a damage character, a healer? How did I want my hair to look? How did I, did I want to be a human? Did I want to be an orc? Did I want to be something like that? And then also, while I was paying attention to that, I was also paying attention to how it was going to favor my personality or my play style in order to actually win the game and the challenges associated with winning the game. And it's the same thing, like when you hit level 15 or something and you can start like riding a horse or you can choose your profession, right? What was I going to be? Was I going to be a blacksmith? Was I going to be an armor creator? I forget what they're called, but like you create armor. Was I going to be a leather worker, a cloth worker, forget a tailor? Or was I going to be like those people that like put gems together and make other cool weapon power ups? And so once I made that choice, it opened up a series of talents and traits that I was able to choose after that. And then once I had leveled those talents or traits to a specific point, I was given more choices that weren't originally available to me, right? I, I was able to do more dungeons. I was able to raid with my friends. I was accepted into certain guilds because they had certain requirements for what they needed. Did they need a healer? Did they need more damage? Did they, did they need a tank? What level or experience were those people and what were they accepting? And so touching on this again of how learning is the foundation of the human experience. When we are young, we don't know any better and we learn these things that just through repetition. They are conditioned into our psyche and a self, a concept of the self is created that we didn't really have much control over. So learning through any medium influences our thoughts and our thoughts influence our behavior, meaning that anything you learn or consume is going to impact either directly or indirectly how you act and move within this world and what opportunities you perceive as available to you. So winning the game of life, business, or any present moment situation you are in is dependent on how your character perceives and acts within that specific situation. So if we want to achieve or create the life of our dreams, then we have to create the character or the player that will lead to that outcome. So how do we create our character. First, it's by integrating everything that we've talked about in this video. You need an intrinsic hierarchy of goals. You need to understand how to frame not only your life on the macro scale and the micro scale in everyday situations and creating rules for you to narrow your attention in and focus on that. And then you need to consistently learn, practice, learn, practice, or learn, build, learn, build in order to increase your skill set and take on higher challenges. And then the second thing is through self-education and self-reflection, because thankfully we live in an age where all information is at the tip of our fingers. If you have a problem, you can usually find some form of a solution to it on the internet or just in a book or something like that. And so you find these ideas as you're creating a better life for yourself and encountering problems on the way by just consuming valuable information and not getting distracted. And sometimes you have to sit, sift through dirt to find gold. You have to read things that you aren't necessarily interested in and those that get bored doing those things will normally just distract themselves instead because they aren't interested and so with that self-education or just consistently learning self-reflection is how you guide future decision making because it is impossible to have 100 percent certainty in the actions you take now and how they're going to impact your future, right? Cause and effect. You don't immediately have the effect of your actions. You just have to take them. And then when you do to take those actions, the only way you can know if they were good or bad, you, you can know if they're good or bad by taking advice from someone else or kind of comparing it to someone else's results. But the only way you're truly going to know 
for certain whether they were good or bad actions is through self-reflection and then pivoting from there. Because even if you took advice from someone else or you know what your actions are going to leave, lead to, you're operating from a completely different worldview in a completely different environment from whoever gave you that advice or wherever you learned it from, right? If you're taking advice from uh, Socrates from hundreds of years ago for right now in this environment where money rules the world, it may not be as practical as you think, and you still need to filter through direct experience. So let's do a quick recap on what we talked about. Games are a way of ordering consciousness to the point of obsession. When you're obsessed, you stop caring what people think and play to win according to your values. Games are enjoyable, and every situation in life can be mentally molded into a game. If you want to avoid mental turmoil, your skill needs to match the challenge that any situation presents. Your perspective will determine the information available to you, and if it's not structured, you will misperceive it. Yourself, a concept, is the player. With time, you want to create the character that can win the games that it is best at. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun with this one. And yeah, let me know what you think about life being a game. And if anything resonated with you in the comments, be sure while you're down there to like and subscribe. And if you want to either support this channel further or just learn new skills that I talk about all the, all the time on this channel, you can check out the two hour writer, which goes over how I write my newsletters, my content, and it teaches you the skill of persuasive writing with other marketing sales content principles that will help you going into the future of the digital world. And then there's modern mastery, which is a community, which has personalized help in the discord and everything from marketing sales, social media growth, uh, spirituality, fitness, all of these things in the form of a strategy library. And then we have roadmaps for beginners and all of that good stuff. And uh, if you're watching this video, you can join that for five bucks. It is a monthly membership, but you can join for five bucks, see if it's a fit for you. All of those things are in the description. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this video again and have an absolutely incredible rest of your day. Peace.